Hello everybody, and in this video I want to talk about translation, which is the process of moving things around, and how we can represent that in a matrix form, if that's even possible. So, say so we have this um, two-dimensional space, and we have this triangle, and we can ask, even more generally, given any set of vectors in sp uh, some space that has n dimension, can we represent a matrix that is n by n that would move all of these vectors together without changing their relation? So in this particular case we have a two-dimensional um, space and we want to move this triangle which is the set of these three corners each of them um, is a two-dimensional vector. So we have a set of three vectors can we move them all together without changing their uh, relation to each other? So we don't want to skew the triangle, we want to maintain the triangle's shape and size. We don't want to scale it, we don't want to rotate it, we just want to keep it as it is and just move it around. Now you can see that the bottom left corner of this triangle starts off at um, the origin, at 0, 0. So it starts off as being the zero vector. And what we want to be able to do is to represent some matrix that once we multiply it by this zero vector, we get some vector that is non-zero. And the answer to that is no, we cannot do that. Um, because the matrix is can only support, can only do linear transformations and one of the prerequisites of linear transformations uh, is that uh, or the definition of a linear transformation is that it keeps the zero vector always at zero so there is no matrix that you can represent that would change the zero vector to something else so a translation by that definition is not a linear transformation because it changes the point of the origin, it changes um, the zero vector. And therefore there cannot be anything that is called a translation matrix. Mathematically speaking, it makes no sense. It, it's not a linear transformation and matrices can only represent linear transformations. So there cannot be a translation matrix. There can be something else that we'll see. So, we have this triangle, we want to move it to the right, say, like that. And this triangle is comprised of these three points. So we want to move all these three points to the right, say, by three, um, all together without changing their relation. We don't want to scale the triangle, we don't want to skew it, we don't want to change its shape or size, we just want to move all of them together to the right. Okay, so each of these points is it can be represented as these vectors. Let's pick on the bottom right one. So we have an X and Y um, coordinates. And if you saw my other video on rotation, you know that we can represent this two-dimensional space with something called an orthonormal basis, which is just these two vectors that are perpendicular to each other and of unit length, so they're normalized. And so the values of these X and Y coordinates of this blue vector end up being scaling factors of these perpendicular orthonormal basis vectors, such that uh, in this case, this um, blue vector with coordinates uh, 3 minus 2, what that means is 3 times the purple vector and minus 2 times the green vector. And what we want to end up with is a point that moves it 3 more times to the right. Now, say, say we have this uh, transformation matrix on the left here, and as you remember from the other video that I made, um, the top row is just the x-axis of the new coordinate space that the um, new vectors are going to be represented in terms of once they, they've been multiplied by this transformation matrix. So the top right, top um, row of this matrix is just the x-axis 
and the bottom row is will be the new y-axis so if we put um, these values in this is a what's called an identity matrix it does nothing um, because what it actually does is re represent things in the exact same way that they currently are which is uh, that the x-axis is represented by one time of the purple vector and zero time of the green one and the y-axis is represented in zero time the purple one and one time of the green one okay so but we can start uh, manipulating this matrix so if say we decide that in our new coordinate system um, the x-axis is defined such that it is two units um, of the original um, purple vector that way um, our, our blue vector will end up taking three um, double-sided steps to the right which will land it exactly where we want it to uh, three three points to the right however uh, if we have a look at this other uh, blue vector that we have and we want to apply this same transformation matrix to both of them and uh, we'll see where it ends up happening is that our second blue vector second blue point gets pushed one point a uh, unit to the left so it gets stretched so we're not getting the desired um, result that we wanted which was to move all the points all together to the right by the same amount without changing the shape of the triangle so this is not working okay um, what we can notice though is that both of these um, points on, at the bottom have the same y value so they have the same y vector if there was a way to move this y-axis itself somehow uh, that would move both of these points together to the right which would be what we are looking for so we can actually try to do that we can move it but we can try to start rotating or s stretching this um, new um, y-axis in in our transformation matrix such that in the new space that um, the vectors are going to be represented in terms of um, a movement of of the y-axis ends up uh, containing some component of movement um, to the left uh, such that um, in this case because we're they're pointing downward so it's we're multiplying by a minus sign we'll end up moving it to the right um, and so we just continue stretching that we can end up in a situation like that where uh, it actually pushes um, uh, our two points together without changing their relation to the right by three units which is exactly what we want and this kind of matrix is called a shear matrix and that's that's the operation that it does so we're getting what we wanted with the shear matrix for these particular two points however let's see what happens to our third point of the triangle does it also end up moving to the right by three units and as we can see it does not it gets moved all the way to the left and our entire um, triangle um, does not maintain its shape even though the two bottom points are moving and um, to the right together uh, maintaining their relation it does not apply to all of the points so this is also not working so however if we could find some other axis that we can apply this shear operation to which would be moving all of our points together maintaining their relation then that would be um, moving our triangle all together to the right and in fact there is such an axis but we cannot really see it from this perspective we need to have a change in perspective and have a look at it like that so what we ended up doing 
is taking our entire two-dimensional space and re-representing it in the third dimension as kind of a um, kind of a slice in two-dimensional space. And what we ended up doing here is um, re-representing all of our points and the matrix in that higher level space. So all our coordinates have an additional dimension, uh, z, so they have a new coordinate that's going to be a multiple of this new uh, coordinate um, axis, which is represented by this red um, vector here, this red arrow. So, and then what we can do, we can take this entire slice, this whole of our two-dimensional space together with all of its coordinates and lift it up by one unit. Okay, so we're lifting the whole of space by one unit. So all of our coordinates um, end up having one time of this red arrow as their z coordinate. And now we have a new axis to play with in our transformation matrix that does not change any of the others. And if we do that, we can do apply the same thing that we did before. Uh, we can do a shear of just uh, changing the direction of this red um, vector as it represents the that red axis in the transformed version of the coordinate space as represented by a transformation matrix. So this is applying a shear in the third dimension it applies it to the entirety of 3D space and by doing though it ends up taking the entirety of 2D space represented here as a slice and just shifting it um, by the same amount and because all of these points are on that same plane exactly that we saw with the bottom two points of our triangle because they were uh, at the same level with respect to the green arrow, this has the same effect but for all of the points that are within that slice. So they're all moving together. And this is how we do um, translation of a two-dimensional space. It's not actually a translation, it's a shear of the entirety of this two-dimensional space as a slice within the third dimension. Now, why are we having to lift our slice off of zero and up to the level of one? Or why do we even need to lift it up at all? And if so, why, why just one? So let's see, let's see how it looks if we don't lift it. So we're staying at the at the level zero of the new axis, and now we're starting to change our matrix, our shift, our shear matrix, uh, adding x uh, contribution, horizontal contribution to our um, new axis. Well, as you can see, our um, result vector is unchanged because we're taking zero amount of that contribution of that new axis. If we take a little bit like 0 0.5 we're ending up taking half of the contribution of that vector in terms of its horizontal um, skew. So we're ending up moving half our metric says to move 2 and we're moving by 1. If we're going all the way up to 1, um, lifting up to by 1, then we can see that we are taking the exact amount that we're saying in our matrix. So this is how our matrix 
can end up controlling um, with a one by one relation, one to one relation to the amount that we are ending up um, translating in a way. Um, our result vectors, they're not really translating, they're still shearing because they're, they're still in the um, they still have one in their um, in their new axis so it's not like a pure translation but it is translation in terms of the x and y axis which is what we care about so now our, our result vectors are taking uh, the exact amount of contribution um, horizontally as is set by our shearing matrix so this is why we're lifting and this is why we're lifting by one so let's get back to what we said earlier so given a set of vectors in a space of n dimensions is there an n by n matrix that moves them all together the answer is still no however if we take all of them and we lift them up into a higher dimension of n plus 1, then um, some n by 1 by n by 1 matrix can shear all of them together. All right? So, what's typically called a translation matrix, quote unquote, is in fact a shear matrix in a higher dimension, as we can see here. And that applies to any number of dimensions. So in three dimensions, it's a bit difficult or impossible to visualize or try to imagine. But what we're doing uh, for quote unquote translating in three dimension is taking the entirety of three dimensional space, re-representing it as a slice in four dimensional space. It's a slice in four dimensions. The entirety of 3D space as a slice of four dimension. Then we can apply a shear of the entirety of the fourth dimension. The entirety of fourth dimension, four dimensional space will be shearing such that it will end up taking the entirety of three dimensional space together. Okay, it's exactly the same concept as we saw from 1D to 2D, from 2D to 3D, and now from 3D to 4D. So the entirety of uh, our three dimensional space is being sheared in the fourth dimension. That's what people typically call a translation matrix. It is not a translation matrix, it is a shear matrix in the fourth dimension space. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, you can hit the like button. If you want to be notified for further videos like that in the future, you can subscribe to the channel. Thank you.